Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out today. Uh, we told you many times in social media and email that we had a big surprise, a wonderful announcement, and we will not disappoint. So to the, to the faculty, the staff, the administrators, the students, and the friends from the community, we are so grateful that you come out today. Thank you for that. Let me just introduce just a few of the people that we have here today. Those who are speaking, I'll introduce in more detail when they're about to speak. Uh, Regent Elaine Mendoza is here. We're grateful that she's here from the Texas a and System. We also have Dr. James Hallmark, the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Grateful that he came. Of course, the AM San Antonio president, Dr. Matson. Of course. We have Dr. Sandy Wolf from the Texas AM San Antonio Foundation. Thank you, our chair elect. Sergio Rodriguez, the president and CEO of the Lopez Foundation, will be introduced later. Also from the Lopez Foundation, Nikki Graham, the philanthropic director. Adriana Cuellar Rojas, the Regional Philanthropy Officer. Thank you. And Amy Nav Narbudis, Senior Research and Evaluation Officer. Thank you for being here. You know, as you drove in today, you came over that hill on University Way on a beautiful sunny morning. And you saw a campus that is expanding. You saw buildings going up. You saw all kinds of exciting things. But the most important thing that's being built is the lives of students, the lives of people, 7,000 of them. And that's what this event is about. And it's about an organization that has decided to partner with us in a way that will help us do better what we've been committed to doing since 2009. So without further ado, and to begin the remarks, I would like to invite our president, Dr. Cynthia Teniente Matson, to the podium. You are so right, Jesse. It's a beautiful day, and it's a great day that we need good news. And today is about good news. I am so delighted to see each of you here and to welcome here to you to witness the incredible generosity of the Hector and Gloria Lopez Foundation for their monumental gift to Texas A&M Foundation and Corte A&M San Antonio. Another special thank you, Regent Mendoza and former board chair, for making it here today, and Vice Chancellor Hallmark, thank you. We appreciate, I appreciate, all of us appreciate your continuous support of A&M San Antonio and the journey we have been on. From the Hector and Gloria Lopez Foundation, of course, I welcome Sergio and all of your colleagues, Adriana, Amy, Nikki, Lucia, Lucia's not here, okay. We welcome you to our community. And as you can see here today, we welcome you with open arms. Your investment today supports one of our core values to be a catalyst for opportunity through teaching, learning, and research, and to advance knowledge and improve our understanding of the world. And heaven knows we need that now, don't we? More than ever. And we want our students to affect positive change. They do affect positive change. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to meet Sergio. We were introduced by Kate Rogers. I don't know if you remember that, Sergio, of course, the great Kate Rogers at the San Antonio Area Foundation. She was hosting a gathering of funders and community thought leaders who were there talking about the role of philanthropy in our community. And this, it was really serendipitous that I had the opportunity to meet Sergio. We kind of sat next to each other. And then we connected over our mutual passion for Latino student success. And over the last five years or so, we've stayed connected. And we bumped into each other serendipitously again in many community circles. Sergio has visited our campus many times, not in disguise, but just innocuous. <laughs> he was here, and, and I would say about Sergio more than anybody I've, I've known in a while, he's actually studied our campus. He actually wanted to understand what we were doing here and what was in the secret sauce, how we serve students, a predominantly Hispanic university with a military embracing focus and a predominantly first-generation student population. This was curious to Sergio, and was such an alignment with what we're doing here. Because we know at a and San Antonio, we're about transforming lives. And I tried to explain that to Sergio, and over the years, he got to see some of that and to just meet other people within the team. Um, it is our core value to bring our network of resources together 
and to be the foundation for the academic journey that so many of our students are on. This is a core value of who we are as an institution. And in 19, 2021, we were recognized as one of only 24 Hispanic-serving institutions in the nation with the seal of Excellencia, a distinction by Excellencia in Education, the nation's premier organization focused on accelerating Latino student success in higher ed. And just yesterday, I had a chance to just connect for a moment with Teresa, and she was so delighted to learn that you were going to be here and making some of these announcements today. Yes, we're making an impact, but as I often say, and I quote, talent is universal, opportunity is not. There's still a lot of work ahead of us to ensure equitable opportunities for all Latino students to achieve their dreams and to change the course of their future by obtaining a college degree. It is this disparity in opportunity that actually fueled the heart of Hector and Gloria, now carried forward by your nephew, Sergio. We can never adequately express the depth of our gratitude for this incredible generosity and the expression of trust that this partnership means. The legacy of Hector and Gloria Lopez will continue to impact Latino students for generations to come. Today's gift is the second largest gift in university history. It follows the Mays Family Gift in 2017, which launched and named the Mays Center. This gift represents a unique and powerful partnership between two institutions that are really focused on providing educational opportunities to Latinos at the core of our mission. And it is with that spirit that we establish the Lopez Scholars Program. The gift is going to provide a life-changing investment in a 15-student cohort beginning in the fall of 2022, and it will ensure full tuition, fees, textbooks, housing, transportation, and even childcare for up to five years. Sergio, I know that you and your Dina are beaming with pride and your thoughtful leadership and your passion to continue to make Hector and Gloria's generosity and legacy a lasting impact that will change the course of many lives. The meaning of today's gift by the Lopez Foundation touches close to many of us, many of our hearts. For me personally, I'm from a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood in the south side of San Antonio, right out this window. I was also a first-generation college student. My journey from the moment I stepped onto a college campus far exceeds what my parents ever expected and dreams for my life, and I have made it my life's work to help ensure other Latino students have those same opportunities for success. The 15 Lopez Scholars will chart a path that will bear witness to give to the gift that you're giving them today. So all of you from the Lopez Foundation, and Sergio in particular, in the words of the great Maya Angelou, and I quote, my wish for you is that you continue. You continue to be who you are, to astonish a mean world in your acts of kindness." End quote. We are very honored to be one of your first recipients, and I consider you a true friend of the university and a care caretaker for those that you want that. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you very much, Dr. Madison. Now, please help me welcome President and CEO of the Hector and Gloria Lopez Foundation, Sergio Rodriguez. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. All right, how wonderful to be here this morning. Um, I just want to thank you, first of all, President Madsen, for your kind comments and for your leadership here at Texas A&M San Antonio. I'd also like to thank Vice Chancellor James Hallmark for coming out from the A&M system, and the, he's been a great thought partner with me these past few years as I uh, have been on my journey learning about higher education. Uh, and also, I'd like to thank Elaine Mendoza, Texas A&M trustee, a longtime advocate for Latino students, and one who's done uh, terrific a terrific job leveraging data across the A&M system. <laughs> so, um, I would also like to take a moment to thank Jesse and the entire uh, A&M San Antonio development team, as well as my own team, 
for getting us here today. Uh, I would say you all did the, the bulk of the work in, in terms of hammering everything out and making all this happen. So thank you to all of you. Uh, today is a very special day for the Hector and Gloria Lopez Foundation, and I'm grateful to all of you here for taking time out of your day to make time for this announcement. Uh, today marks a historic moment for us at the Hector and Gloria Lopez Foundation and for Texas A&M San Antonio. It is the second grant we've announced ever, and it is the second largest gift to the university. So sometimes second is, is not a bad thing. <laughs> Two is not a bad number. So. Today, I'm excited to announce a $2.1 million grant to the Texas A&M University, University of San Antonio Foundation. There's that two number. Okay. So let, let me tell you why, why we're doing this. So Texas has the second largest Latino population in the country. And yet, according to Excelencia in Education, at four-year institutions, Hispanic graduation rates are 14 percentage points lower than those of their white, non-Hispanic peers in Texas. We also know that the lifetime earnings of a bachelor's degree holder are, what, are about $1.2 million higher on average than those with no degree. We have to do better than that in Texas, and Hispanic-serving institutions like Texas A&M San Antonio are leading the way. Texas A&M San Antonio is a young university, but it was created with the promise of serving Latino students in San Antonio and in South Texas, and that mission is built into its DNA. The grant I'm announcing today will fund 15 Lopez Scholars starting in the fall of 2022, offering support for tuition and fees, housing, meals and transportation, as well as full wraparound services, including paid internships, in the area of study for those students, leadership development, and much, much more. There is no application, and the scholars will be selected at random from a pool of students who have demonstrated financial need, intend to be the first in their family to graduate from college, and are Latino. My aunt and uncle, Hector and Gloria Lopez, were both from small towns in South Texas, but they had big ideas. For those of you who may know South Texas, Oilton is a very small town not far from Laredo. That's where my uncle Hector was born. He grew up with modest means in a family of seven children, but he had a dream of going to college, and that dream was supported by his parents. My Aunt Gloria, on the other hand, grew up as the daughter of the town doctor in San Diego, Texas, Dr. Jose Garcia. Dr. Garcia was educated in Monterrey, Mexico, and went on to the Escuela Nacional de Medicina de Mexico in Mexico City for medical school. The Garcias were a well-established family of Tejano ranchers whose ranches were part of Spanish and Mexican land grants from the 17 and 1800s. Uh, I asked my aunt once whether he was more a doctor or more rancher, and she said, well, in his heart, he's a rancher, but he knows he can't pay the bills <laughs> just being a rancher. So when he was in medical school, I will say this, when he was in medical school in Mexico City around 1900, it was taught in French. So as, as Gloria's father, he taught her Spanish, English, and French as she grew up in San Diego, Texas. Like my uncle, she grew up with the expectation of attending a university and with the full support and, and expectation of her parents to do so. Hector and Gloria's paths first crossed while they were attending the University of Texas in Austin in 1943. My uncle Hector was only 16 years old. You could do that back then. You can't, you can't do that so much anymore. He went on to serve in the United States Army in Japan during his, uh, during his college time and then returned to complete his law degree at Baylor University. My Aunt Gloria was a popular student at UT, and she graduated Phi Beta Kappa in 1947 with a degree in French, but a secret love of numbers, which she would end up using for the rest of her life. After graduating, Gloria returned to San Diego as a high school teacher. Hector returned to South Texas after passing the bar, but he was no longer the 16-year-old she first met 
and dismissed, I should mention, in Austin. <laughs> they were married in 1951, and they established a home in Alice, Texas, which was an oil and gas boom town in the early 1950s, and an excellent place for a young lawyer to start his practice. That's where their dreams became a reality. Together, they established the Galo Land and Cattle Company. They were equal partners in their ranching business, and I, I truly mean this. Gloria had the legacy ranch land in her family and a natural talent for financials and investments. And my uncle Hector used his legal background and his expertise in oil and gas to not only keep the land in their family, but to add to it significantly. Together, they grew their ranching business to 14 ranches comprising nearly 35,000 acres in South Texas. My uncle Hector definitely had a 1950s pull yourself up by the bootstraps perspective on life. He was of that generation. He believed in hard work and persistence and felt that time was the most precious asset anyone had, so you better use it to improve yourself. As a child, he would wake me up at 3 or 4 in the morning to go to the ranches because you had to drive there in the dark so that the sun was up and you could take full advantage. <laughs> he was active in politics and economic development. He advocated for the education of youth in Alice in South Texas. And oftentimes, my uncle was the only Latino in the room. I have seen the photos of his graduating law school class in Baylor in 1949. And I've seen the photo of him with the board of directors of the Corpus Christi National Bank in the 1990s, and he was the only one. My Aunt Gloria was known to ask every young person she talked to, family or not, about their college plans. If you did not have a good answer ready, she would supply you one for you. <laughs> she was also there to offer her support. They both understood the importance of higher education to help Latinos get that seat at the table and felt that that was the secret of their success. As they grew older, my aunt and uncle brought me in to run the ranch business. I had been working in the U.S. and abroad for about 20 years with a large technology consulting firm. And yes, I had spent a lot of my summers as a child at those hot and dusty ranches, but running ranching the running a ranch business did not seem like an obvious next step in my career at the time. But I knew my aunt and uncle well, and I knew that their legacy and their story and what they were trying to achieve went beyond the hunting and the oil and gas and the cattle, and that their vision could mean a lot for future generations of Latino students here in Texas. With no children of their own, my aunt and uncle left nearly all of their assets to the Hector and Guardia Lopez Foundation on their passing for the purposes of educating first-generation Latinos from Texas, and they entrusted me to lead it, for which I am proud beyond words. As I said, this is the second grant we will make in Texas, but it will not be the last. We are investing in El Paso, in Austin, San Antonio, South Texas, and the Rio Grande Valley. Our foundation is perpetual, and our annual giving after this year will be in excess of $11 million. We are Latino-founded, Latino-led, and 100% Latino-focused in our giving. Our time has come, and the foundation, Hector and Gloria's legacy, is committed to ensuring that we will do our part to help Latino students cross the stage, accept their diplomas, and create opportunities for economic growth that will make Texas a better place to live. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's time for a special unveiling and a few pictures. So if I could get uh, Regent Mendoza and uh, Dr. Hallmark, Dr. Matson, uh, for the first picture. We'll do a couple of others. So, when the photographers are ready, because you know it's all about the picture, just so that the photographers take over at this point. And uh, uh, maybe Sergio and Dr. Masson, you can sort of unveil this 
and uh, and me that one. All right. Staff and Sandy, if you could come up and uh, and maybe take the place of the Jaguars, and we'll be able to fit in the picture. Thank you so much. And then we'll get done with the formal pictures. Maybe over a couple of them over here. later, can and will. Sergio, I knew a lot of that story, but there were parts that I didn't know, and that was absolutely moving, absolutely inspiring. That is why I love doing what I do, and I know why we love doing what we do, everybody who works in the system. So thank you so, so much. Perhaps most importantly, though, in all of this, it is about students, those future students, current students, right? Um, and so we're going to hear from a couple of them. Uh, the first one is Yira Navarrete, who is a sophomore biology major. Share for us with a couple of minutes her, her reaction. Please help me welcome Yira. Good morning, everyone. I apologize. I'm a bit nervous. Um, like he said, my name is Yira Navarrete. I'm a sophomore here at uh, Texas A&M San Antonio. I'm majoring in biology, and I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, and I want to thank for the generous um, donation to the school. Um, it will help students like me, so a little background on me. Um, I was born in Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico, um, and so my parents and I are from there. Um, whenever I was six years old, we decided to move to Austin, Texas. Um, and it wasn't something easy because I was very young. I started school here, so um, I feel like I adapted very well, but I'm sure that there's students that come at a later age and you have to learn, you have to learn the English and stuff like that. And so. Um, I'm the first to graduate high school and the first to attend college in my family. Um, at Texas San and San Antonio, like I said, I'm majoring in biology. I do want to add a minor in psychology um, because I want to be a dentist one day. Um, I do not have everything planned out, and um, that's something that I want to work on. Um, but having people like you all, um, obviously I don't know each one of you, but having that moral support and that economic um, help is a lot because from where I come from, my parents had to work hard every day. And um, every morning, they would have to wake me up at 5 a.m. Um, being very young, I would have to be taken to a babysitter. I didn't see my parents for the rest of the day. I would cry a lot. I didn't understand why they had to go. I didn't understand why my dad had to come back from work um, sweating. I didn't understand why I had to translate for my parents. I didn't, I didn't know any of that. Um, I just knew that my parents were doing this for, for me, and they would always tell me that this was for my future. Um, sorry. Um, um, I became more aware of my needs and my surroundings at a very young age. Um, whenever I was 10, I already knew how to speak and translate English to Spanish. My dad um, would cut yards, and my mom, she would work at a restaurant. And I would go out with my dad. I didn't know any better. I didn't think that that was something a child was not supposed to do. I was very quiet, and I would just obey my parents, and I would understand what we needed to do in order to, to continue on to the very next day. I was very blessed to always have food on our table. But like I said, I'm here to represent students that struggle a lot more and that you know they have to go out there and work. Um, I've been very blessed to, like I said, have food on my table and not struggle and stuff like that. And, um, in high school, I didn't know what my plan was. I didn't know um, what college was. Like I said, I was the very first one to go to college. And my parents always encouraged me to do better, but since they didn't have education, they didn't know what um, filling out TASPA was. They didn't know what a college application looked like. And they always tell me, Miha, you can do this. And we have your back. And 
I would have to fill out those applications for myself, and my parents didn't understand what that taking eight co classes in college was a lot. My dad would ask me, why aren't you taking seven classes? Why aren't you taking eight classes? And I was like, Dad, this is a lot. And so I do have a lot of pressure put on for my parents just because they don't understand. But I know because they do it because they want the best for me. And um, I consider myself a leader, and I tend to be very open-minded. Um, because we all grew up differently. We all have different goals, but having people like you all sit here and have that moral support for us is a lot because our parents sometimes don't understand that. They don't understand that, and sometimes I tell my parents stuff that I'm very proud of myself for doing, and they don't react how I want them to react, and that is just because they don't understand. So having people like you all here is such big support for us because I personally don't work and I am not able to work and there's a lot of students that are not able to work, and financially, that's a big barrier. Because you want to go to college, you want to pay for college, you want to have all of these other experiences, but you feel like you can't because that's a barrier. And having you all here is able to break that barrier, and now it's our part for students to represent one another and to do our work in the classes and to work hard, and that's giving back to you guys. Because that's showing that we're strong enough, just how you guys are working for us, we're able to work hard, and. We're creating our own future, but we're also representing everyone else here. Um, that's really it. I want to thank everyone. Um, I'm very blessed to be here. Um, I am very happy to be here. I never saw myself coming to college as something that didn't seem realistic. I honestly didn't have this in my two-year plan or whatever. I don't know what I'm doing next year, but I know that I have the support and from the school and from people um, that are willing to give to us. Um, so I want to thank everyone. And thank you for having me. Thank you. I thought Sergio's speech was inspiring. <laughs> and I heard. <laughs> Our next uh, student speaker is Marco Caracilla. He's a junior computer science maker. Just got to meet him. A bright student we're very proud of. Please help me welcome Marco. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> Uh, I'm Marcus Garcia. Like he said, I'm a junior. I am going to be studying, or I am studying, computer information systems. I always just shorten it to CIS. What that basically is is just computers and business at the same time. I want to get into IT, networking, that kind of stuff when I'm older. And I always knew when I, since I was a little kid, that I wanted to go to college. So I'm like, I'm actually not first gen. So I always had my parents who would tell me you need to go to college. Why? I never understood why. I was always saying, why should I go to college, right? There's always that thought in the back of your head, right? I can go to the military, I can just work, you know, I, I want money, you want money. And then they're like, no, go to college, you, I, trust me, it'll be way better for you. And so, then I learned their story. Slowly, as I grew up, they told me their story. My parents, they both had to be, they were first gen. I am their product of success. So my dad, was, I'm going to start with him. His mom is from Mexico, and he, his dad was a mailman. So his whole life, he had to basically be a pseudo-parent for his three. He had one brother and two sisters. And since his dad was always working so that they could have food and stuff like that, you know, and his mom was always doing the mom stuff of you know, <laughs> what moms do. He, uh, he was like the parent for his brothers and sisters. You know, his sisters, they'd be like, where's daddy? Oh, he's at work. And the funny thing is he's actually the second to youngest. So he has two older sisters, but he was still like the leader of them. And he, I guess from a young age, he got tired of seeing that cycle of just wake up, work, go home, go to sleep, that's it. Like, he wanted more from life than to just do that. And so he thought the way, to, the way to break that cycle is to go to college. And he was right. His mom disagreed. His mom was like, no, you're going to go work with your dad because we need twice the income, right? Bright idea. More, more people working, more money. He said, no, I'm going to go to college, and I'm going to... It'll be worth it in the end. His mom, he's like, no, we need, we need money, you're gonna work. 
and said, just trust me. Sure enough, he went and he got a degree from uh, Incarnate Word. He did a double major and he started, he started teaching. And so he was a teacher. And then later on he met my mom who was also a teacher and then here I am. So, <laughs> so, so ever since I was little, he always told me, go to college, go to college, because that was his, that was his way of fixing his, his life. Like going to college made everything so much better. And now his family is doing great, I'm doing great, we're all doing great. And it's stuff like these, like scholarships and grants, it's stuff like that that let him go to college. Opportunities like this changed his life. Opportunities like this basically changed my life. Because if he never went to college and I'm, I was still here, it would have been a totally different story. Opportunities like this change people's lives. That's how it is. And so I just want to really say a big thank you to the foundation. I want to say a big thank you to everybody here for being here for this announcement. It is a huge announcement. It really is. I know they've been saying on Instagram and stuff, we got a huge announcement, right? But it is a huge announcement. It really is. There's people out there that this is it, it's a life changer. It simply is. They're like, oh, I can't go to college. I, I need to work. Or I can't go to college. I need to take care of my baby sister. Well, now you can. Now you can. This is a game changer. So, that, yeah. Thanks <laughs> on Instagram. They are the reason that we do what we do, and so grateful that partners can help us do that. We would like to hear now from Regent Elaine Mendoza. We are so grateful that you made the trip down. Her list, they gave me a list two pages long of accomplishments of yours, and we don't have time to read all of them. But thank you for your leadership. Thank you for being part of this. Please help me welcome Regent Mendoza. Thank you. Dang, this is why we're here, these students. And this, and this why we're here? Oh my, oh man, and the future looks really bright. Girl, I'm nervous too. <laughs> Especially after having to follow you too, whatever. Thank you, thank you so much for the opportunity to join the celebration today. The Hector and Gloria Lopez Foundation is from Texas, for Texas. The foundation is a reflection of Hector and Gloria's commitment to providing what many Latinos in Texas have not had, an opportunity to pursue their dreams of earning a baccalaureate degree and changing the economics of their families forever. How exciting! This is a new foundation and one that is not only dedicated to making a difference for students, but it is also unique since it is a substantial foundation, philanthropically oriented, established by a Latino family, run by Latinos for Latinos. Sergio. Thank you so much. And now, now this foundation serves as a model across this country for what is possible. And Sergio, Sergio is a thoughtful leader who, along with his team, diligently researched, then formulated a strategy to best leverage the power of this philanthropic endeavor. The type of careful approach endured, taken by him and his team is so admirable. It was in December 2018 that Dr. Hallmark and I met with you to listen, to learn about your aunt and uncle and their vision and how you have seeped it into your soul as your mission to make it all happen. And you've been at it ever since to get us to this day. Your commitment to finding the most effective way to honor your aunt and uncle and their vision of making such a profound difference is especially why 
we at the Texas A&M University system are so grateful you chose to partner with the Texas A&M San Antonio Foundation. And as one of the first two grant recipients from the Hector and Gloria Lopez Foundation. We are grateful. You know, the A&M system stands firmly behind Texas A&M San Antonio and their great leader, and will do whatever we need to do to support the successful implementation of this incredible gift to our students. Yes, we, we celebrate today. It's exciting. It's awesome. Next, we must ensure our students graduate, appreciate the gift they have been awarded by the Hector and Gloria Lopez Foundation, and in return, contribute back in the same spirit of generosity and positive impact as it was given. Thank you for entrusting us with this incredible gift. We will not let you down. Am I right? Amen. Thank y'all. Thank you. We have one more speaker representing a very important entity that some of you may not know too much about, but this gift actually is only possible also because of the A&M San Antonio Foundation. Uh, this is a foundation, it's a separate 501c3 that exists to support Texas A&M University San Antonio. It's a beautiful thing. It has incredibly committed leaders. It has existed for a long time. It's worked steadily for scholarships, for other sources, and it fuels a lot of the great things that you see around here. So we have with us Dr. Sandy Wolf, who is our chair-elect, our incoming chair for the foundation board, and uh, somebody I've really enjoyed getting to know over the past several months. So if you would please welcome Dr. Sandy Wolf. Thank you. I know I'm the only thing standing between you and lunch, so don't worry. <laughs> um, it is not every day where we get to, um, to honor such a life-changing gift. You've heard that so much today, um, and I don't think that can be overstated. Um, and I'm very lucky because not only am I here representing the foundation, but I also work for the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, um, which is the oldest and largest Hispanic chamber in the country, started right here in San Antonio. And the nice thing about that is that 80% of our members are small businesses and family-owned businesses, very much like the Hector and Gloria Lopez Foundation when they started their business. Uh, we are fortunate that Hispanic Chamber not only do we kind of firsthand see not only the struggles um, of small business owners and connect them to the resources, but we also get to see those rewards, um, which is from working hard, um, overcoming obstacles in our Hispanic-owned businesses. Um, the Hector and Gloria Lopez Foundation are a beautiful example of not only what it means to grow your business, but to give back and to echo what Elaine had said, um, that hopefully one day they will be in that position to also pay it forward. On behalf of the Texas A&M San Antonio Foundation, thank you, thank you, thank you for this generous gift to our students and our community. Thank you very much, Sandy. Well, I, I have to say once again, I'm so grateful to each of you for coming out. I know that the 6th of July is not exactly the busiest day on a college campus, but it was busy today because people realized the importance of this for this university. We're so grateful. We're so grateful once again. Sergio, Nikki, Adriana, Amy, thank you for what you do. Thank you for your partnership with us. We've so enjoyed working with each of you. And uh, we, are, we as, as Regent Mendoza said, we will not let you down. We're going to be a great partnership, and you're going to see that. So thank you so much. We have one thing in closing that we'd like to do, and I'd like to have a little fun with this. We have gifts for the four of you. But, John, instead of taking them out, let's let them take them out. It's a buffet of gifts. So please come forward. We have you specially made. We have each one is a unique image of the AM San Antonio campus. And, of course, labeled with our university names. When you look at it on your office wall, you'll remember us. So pick the one that speaks to you the most. And uh, we would like you to have that in memory of this day. Please. Fortunately, they didn't all go for the same one. I was worried that might happen. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful.
Wonderful. Thank you. Once again, thank you for coming. We have some refreshments. Um, pictures, yes, please take a picture, post it on social media. We love that kind of stuff. We've got a balloon wall set up for you over there. I would like to get one more picture if General is still here uh, with the big check, but thank you again for coming. And that concludes our event.